Good morning. Good morning. My name is Don Michaelman, and I want to welcome you to the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Before we start, if you could turn your cell phones off or put them on mute or something like that, would appreciate that. I will have our commission members introduce themselves and before we start the meeting. Tom, would you like to start off? Good morning, Tom Hutchison. Tom O'Reilly. Ted Gamboji. Susan Graham. And I want to and welcome Susan and Tom Riley as new members to the commission. We will go ahead and start. I hereby call to order the April 14th, 2022 public hearing of the City of Prescott Planning Commission. Uh, we want to welcome uh, uh, Council Member Rusing and Montoya to the meeting here. This is an open public hearing and is being tape recorded and videotaped by the city. The proceedings are being televised by representatives of the public media. The public, local, cable, and radio stations may also be excuse me, rebroadcasting. The number of commission members present is five. It will take four for a majority. As some individuals may be attending this meeting remotely, all parties wishing to be heard, including commission members, are required to state their name prior to speaking in order to ensure accurate minutes. Members of the public, when called upon, are required to state their name and address for the record so that we may know who is speaking and be able to contact them at a later date if necessary. First item is the approval of the minutes for February 24th, and we are going to defer that because we only have three commission members here who are at that meeting, so that those minutes will be deferred until the next meeting on that. Next item is REZ21-008, Property Owner, Granite Property Investments, LLC, Applicant, Granite Basin Engineering, a request for a rezoning from RE-2 Acre Rural Estate 2 Acre to BG Business General to allow for a mini storage and a commercial building on APN 106-02-052C at 5900 Willow Creek Road. Tammy. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman, members of the Commission. Tammy DeWitt, Community Planner with the City of Prescott. So we're going to kind of do what we did at our last meeting when this was heard back in October. We're going to kind of do an overview of the area again, um, the general plan, what it shows in the zoning map, um, just to kind of get into it. Then we're going to go through both applications, the, um, the rezoning 008 and the um, REZ 21007. We're going to do them kind of both together because they are kind of, they're, they work together. So they both affect the same area. So we're going to kind of keep these moving together um, as we go through this. And please feel free to answer any questions. And we do have our traffic engineer, Ian Manningly, who has some comments too when we get to that point. So, OK. First, the, we have the 2015 general plan land use map. Um, you've seen this before. Um, this area along Willow Creek Road, here's Pinion Oak subdivision here, and here's the frontage here. This is um, designated for commercial development. This was carried over from the 2003 general plan, which also had it as commercial. So at least since 2003, this area has, this stretch along the corridor has been designated for commercial uses. And here's a close-up version. These are the two parcels we're looking at here. In the red, we have it for commercial. And this kind of gets you down to it. There was some questions about traffic volumes in this area. Um, this graphic here is from the SIMPO um, traffic study that was done previously. Um, they had it as 25,000 trips um, per day on that stretch of roadway. Um, in the last TIA that we just got, they showed at 27,000, so it is going up in volume. Um, if any of you drive through this intersection here in the early morning and the afternoon, there, this is a significant area of traffic for the city of Prescott. So when this property was annexed in November of 2007, um, the, 
the zoning that was brought over, carried over to the city, what we do is when we annex a piece of property, as you guys have been doing them lately, we also ask you to rezone it to a similar zoning for the city that is in the county. So when this was annexed, that corridor there was a RCU-2A, which is a holding zone in the county. So areas that have not been detail zoned or come through with a zoning map change in the county, they have a holding zone, which is the RCU-2A. City of Prescott has a similar zoning. It's the RE two acre zoning. It's kind of a holding zone for something else to come forward or for it to be developed as a residential two acre lot sizes. But usually we see these as a holding zone for something further to come in later on. Um, later on. Um, across the right way, we did ha do have business regional over here. It is vacant still. Um, that was done, what, 2001 or so? Or a little, yeah, about 2005. That was annexed and rezoned to business regional. And we also have some business regional down here to the south. The, t the RE two acre description, the way it's described, it's to maintain the rural or agricultural character of the area. Usually you see these in the outlying areas of the jurisdictions um, where you see the higher, the lower density and more agricultural uses. And they're also designed to preserve extensive open space and maintain the rural residential character of the area. Like I said, you usually see these in the, um, that's not areas that have been platted as subdivisions and they're more of a rural area, more agricultural uses that we see them on the outskirts of the city. So the request for both of these um, properties is to rezone it to business general. Um, this is a little bit more moderate intensity business di district. It has many uses that are allowed in the business general zoning district. But most of the uses are most often located on a collector or arterial street. This is a major road in the city of Prescott, so it makes sense for this to all be commercial as it's been designated in the general plan since 2003. Um, some of the uses you see are retail stores, um, business and offices, restaurants, and uses such as that. So the first request they have is a rezoning of the north parcel so we have Pinion Oaks Road here, and we have Pioneer Parkway and Willow Creek Road. So this is the north parcel. Um, this is a zoned RE2 acre. Um, the original site plan that was submitted had a, um, a turn in off of Pioneer Parkway to come into the property for people going east. Uh, this, the city, I mean, the Yavapai County maintains, they oversee this section of Pioneer Parkway. And uh, they have an access management plan for that area, which does not d allow any other new access points off of Pioneer Parkway. They're all managed to what you kind of see now out there. So this was not, whoop, very touchy. This is not supported by Yavapai County. Um, they did have the churn here off of Willow, Willow Creek Road for tra traffic heading south. Then in the traffic impact analysis site plan, they did take off that northern portion of access, and they had the point here of access off of Willow Creek Road. And then we have here off of Pinion Oaks Drive for the traffic to be able to come down and come out. And the, 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 the only use they have associated on this site plan is for a proposed new Dunkin' Donuts to the North Porcel. Um, there are no other uses proposed on the southern portion, so we do have some uh, stipulation. We um, are going to ask that you guys add on to the, uh, if you chose to choose to move this forward, um, that it is in accordance with the site plan and that any future users, ha future uses have to come through a formal site plan review, which comes before this body in the city council. So any other uses in the future that come forward, they'll have to come through a public hearing process and be reviewed by Planning and Zoning and City Council. Okay. Um, the second request is on the southern portion here. It is also zoned RE2 acre, uh, proposing to the commercial zoning. There are different uses proposed on this building, on this site. We have here a indoor storage facility, and then we have an office building here. Um, we have not been told what kind of office uses will go in here. Um, that's something we'll have to review as the uh, uses come through and once it's permitted, if it's approved. 
So we did have two traffic impact analysis done, one for each um, um, property. We did email those out to the commission members. Um, they're kind of dry reading. <laughs> but we do have our traffic um, engineer here who has his own analysis, I believe, Ian? Okay, and so I will bring his. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming over. Sure. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian Mattingly, city traffic engineer. So, um, just as some background, I just kind of, I just want to give a little disclaimer, a little bit of information. So, obviously, as a staff member, our goal is to support um, development. You know, there's a property out here that obviously is looking to rezone and go through a process to uh, promote some development or change in use. And so uh, our goal is to then implement the city code, which has a um, section on traffic impact analysis requirements. So when we look at uh, this come in, we then um, ask the applicant to provide a traffic impact analysis to study um, you know, the existing conditions and the, the proposed changes to traffic and use to, to see what type of uh, mitigations would be needed to implement something if it's supported through the process. So I'm not here to um, either, you know, advocate for or against this project. I'm just here to make sure that as far as traffic goes, we, we mitigate it and put in those requirements and improvements that will make the site, if approved, work well with the existing conditions. And obviously we have in Pinion Oaks an existing condition where we have a lot of homes out there already using an intersection that's a, a little bit challenged already. I'm, I know everybody knows that. And so I just, that's the background. And then I'll just go into what we did. So um, the developer did hire CivTech who basically they did two TIAs for the two separate developments, but they do overlap because they obviously use the same access and uh, they're very different in the impacts. The first one, so what I've done is I just basically have a, uh, a summary, and, and this is just the bullet points that are taken almost directly from the reports that you were given. The first one is for the mini storage. It's the less intense, certainly, of the traffic generation, and it only is asking for an access on Pinion Oaks Drive. Um, so I basically summarized, uh, you know, it's uh, three and a half acres. It's got the square footage that they're asking for. I think they've changed some things regarding the commercial building use, but it, it really isn't very important in that they don't create very much uh, traffic out of a mini storage. And so um, the daily totals are about 186 vehicles, AM peak 17 and PM peak 24. Now they are proposing, and I'm not gonna switch back to the site plan, but they're proposing one access on Pinion Oaks Drive to be located basically um, as far west as you can, you know, in, in practicality, away from Willow Creek Road. Um, and that would be lined up with the future driveway if Dunkin' Donuts and that development is approved across from that, that other access. So there'll be two new driveways, one for the mini storage and one for, for the Dunkin' on Pinion Oaks um, across from each other far west, 290 feet west of uh, Willow Creek Road. Um, the, it recommends that they have a widening of Pinion Oaks Drive. Currently, if you go all the way out to the intersection, it's only striped for one entry lane and one exit lane, but there's sufficient width for it to be striped for three lanes. And so that width actually narrows down as you go kind of by the sales office. It, it slightly narrows, so the proposal is to widen that out so that that three lane width is you know, continuous all the way through to the end of the commercial subdivision and then would taper back in at some point back to the neighborhood width. The, um, that would allow for us to, and this is a, to allow auxiliary left turn pockets for the Dunkin' Donuts and the storage so that if you're coming home, let's say you live in Pinion Oaks and you're behind someone who's accessing the storage units, that car would be able to go into a center turn pocket and you could drive by going home and then they could turn when it's clear. And the same for Dunkin' Donuts. The development overall does not contribute a significant amount of traffic to the intersection. This is a relative. Um, and so they, there aren't any, it doesn't really trigger any warrants on its own 
to mitigate Pinion Oaks and Willow Creek Road, like to signalization or anything else. So that's kind of what we have going on with the mini storage. Pretty minor traffic impacts, uh, one access, widen Pinion Oaks and those things. So as far as the TIA goes, the city comments and requirements, we really don't have any additional comments to add or requirements so far as that one goes. Um, I have some attachments of the main report document, but the primary one is obviously the Dunkin' Donuts rezone. And that one, you know, as uh, Tammy stated, has uh, a diff uh, much more impact to the site and the location. So this one, these are basically the bullet points of the summary, but in general, the Yavapai County does not support the access point to Pioneer Parkway and neither would the city for safety purposes. We do, the report and the city supports a ride in, ride out access on Willow Creek Road. That would, we require, it would have a deceleration right turn pocket into the site so that it doesn't negatively impact the through movements going south or the heavy dual left coming from PV and turning. So that would be a right in right out with a right turn deceleration lane. The uh, access point on Pinion Oaks, like I said, is gonna be basically a mirror image of what is across the street at the storage unit located west. The, um, there was comments in the, in the report that you might want to look, the city might want to look at mitigation, if this is approved, mitigation of traffic that might travel through Pinion Oaks <laughs> neighborhood. If let's say you lived in the Williamson Valley area and you went there and used the, the facilities or got a donut or whatever you're gonna do in the future, you might drive down Pinion Oaks and then go out to the access on Pioneer. And we wouldn't wanna encourage commercial use of that roadway in that way. So they say possible traffic mitigation. What I've, what I've done is this one has much more um, city comments and requirements above what the TIA said, kind of supplemental to. So mirroring those things, Pioneer Parkway access is not supported. There is a recommendation to restripe the dual westbound to southbound left turn lane on Pioneer Parkway, the very long left turn that's there. It just happens that that, um, that should be restriped in the future when you have full build out and additional traffic in the simple study, that should be restriped to improve that condition. Of course, we, we support the widening of Pinion Oaks Drive to provide the three lanes of traffic, as we've already talked about. In order to mitigate the neighborhood traffic concern, I would recommend that there would be a um, requirement to have the developer install a series of three speed humps west of the west property line of the commercial development to discourage the neighborhood traffic. Now, a signal is warranted based on the development and the increased traffic. The conditions are already, I think, failing under stop control in the peak hour on the left out. That's why people who live there have trouble turning at certain times of day, pretty much any peak hour day time. And so a signal is um, warranted. However, it's not supported at Pinion Oaks by the city. The spacing is not appropriate. Um, we've always known that. Um, we've obviously been watching this location. Um, this kind of pushes it a little faster, but it's not supported at that location. So how do you mitigate that? The, the yes. spacing between the light at Pioneer Parkway in Willow Creek and then the... Pinion Oaks. Pinion Oaks. Yes. It's about 700 feet. Um, ideally, we like to go for a minimum of about 13, 20, a quarter mile on, on, a, on an arterial like this. So um, it's not supported. The... TIA looked at alternative um, measures. They, they talked about, um, you know, a roundabout, also not supported by the city at that location, um, a left turn acceleration lane. So you might modify the median so that you could make kind of a two, two part left turn movement where you wait for a gap in southbound traffic, turn into the center lane and then accelerate. Um, that's not supported um, by me, um, the city, due to the fact that most people want to have the, the choice to go north, maybe to Chino and those locations, but a majority might also go east. They might go to PV. 
And so currently they can turn and they can kind of make their way across and go into the slip lane and get on the, the freeway. If you allow that to happen and you have an acceleration lane, you're, you're basically defeating that because people will continue to cut across like two lanes of through movement and then a, a right turn. And the, all the speeds out here are pretty high, 45 miles an hour, but they drive faster, as everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we recognize that too. So how do you mitigate this? Um, one of the recommendations of the report was that you look at, it was just a, a concept of a southbound to northbound movement. Um, the city, you know, again, we're just trying to mitigate and help what's happening here with the neighborhood and with the neighborhood plus development to resolve the issue at Pinion Oaks. Um, a southbound to northbound U-turn concept is the preferred option for the city. What that looks like um, is a location about 700 feet south of Pinion Oaks whereby when it is constructed, and that would be up in the air, um, you, you would no longer be able to turn left out of Pinion Oaks. You would turn right. You would go south 700 feet, enter into a turn pocket that is signal controlled. So you have an actual red arrow, and there is a uh, northbound Willow Creek traffic then stops and provides a U-turn, and then there's an extension of the roadway a large bulb out so that the, the movements can be made by larger vehicles. And that intersection is then tied to um, the existing signal at Pioneer and it works in conjunction with that. So let's say it's, you know, a, a heavy traffic time of day, you wouldn't be stopped at that U-turn when Pioneer is in, in the green phase. So that the, the movement would continue. You would then, if you're coming south, you'd go down, you'd wait, then it would service you and then you turn and then you could go north, south, east, you could go whichever way you want. The location was chosen specifically because in the past there's been thought about other commercial developments on the east side of the road that, you know, nothing's going on there now, but we know that that will occur. And so this spacing then can be used for future signalization, full signalization, where the U-turn could still be retained but you could also have safe access to the west side developments and it spaces out well with Haas, um, you know, the new signal at Haas, then you'd have this signal, then you'd have that signal. So then they would be coordinated and they could have progression. Now I understand this isn't a perfect solution, but it does mitigate the fact that you still want people who are now using Dunkin' Donuts not to cut through the neighborhood and, and, and to make safe movements and it also improves. We looked at the um, delay in time already for a Pinion Oaks resident. Just to make a left turn during peak hours is as much or more than it would take to come down here and make this movement. And certainly that's gonna only degrade as this time goes on. Um, so we are we're making that recommendation. And then obviously, like I said, we don't know the timing of this. I wouldn't imagine that this would have to be built immediately. Um, certainly if these things are approved, there's a process by which things are constructed and it takes a while. So we might look at this as an offsite type uh, contribution by the developer to provide to the city so that we can build something like this. And then we would only remove the left turn existing at Pinion Oaks until such time as it was either we needed it because of increased traffic or, you know what I mean, otherwise it was convenient for the city to build. And so you likely would still have a three lane section on Pinion Oaks with full movements, a left, one in, a left out and a right out until such time as the development progressed and we needed to build this U-turn signal modification. I don't know if it'll work. I wonder if this, will this open something? It looks like it will. So the reason I do this is this, this isn't, this, this concept is different but it's used. So this is an example from Tucson where something like this is in place. Now it's not our exact thing, but basically if you could imagine, the distances are much greater here, but we would have a Pinion Oaks access that would be, you know, you could imagine right in, right out, and left in. We would, we would allow left in, and we would actually channelize the median, we would actually extend the median that is existing on Willow Creek further south to make sure that you're actually channelized into Pinion Oaks. So you still have three quarter movement at Pinion Oaks, but you're 
the last quarter would occur south, and you would basically it would be something like this, just slid down Willow Creek, where you basically construct this long turn pocket. They get in there, they wait at a indication. Then, like I said, this signal is tied to the one north, and then we extend the asphalt so that you can actually make a you know a movement with any vehicle you might have or we otherwise need to. And then you could accelerate and then go into the right lane or go north to Chino or do whatever you want. Um, so, um, the, and on, on YouTube, you know, these things aren't, they're not common, but they are used for various purposes. We're kind of using it in a different way here. <laughs> but like I said, my goal is to see what impacts happen if we move forward and how to resolve them in the best way possible. In, in, in addition to what the TIA and the traffic engineer that they hired did. And so those are the recommendations that I would add, you know, to anything that would move forward. Now I'm happy to answer any questions. Before we do any questions for Ian, I'd like to request that the members of the public respect the speakers up here. Whether you agree with them or disagree with them, they deserve the opportunity to make their presentations. Thank you. Ted, did you have something? Or? Uh, yeah, a couple of things. I wanted the public to know that that uh, TIA analysis was 157 pages, was a lot to digest. So Ian has done a pretty good job of recapping, but um, Ian, just for my benefit, if I remember correctly, there were, in that TIA study, there were five options, mm -hmm. right? Now, we covered the traffic light. That's too close to the intersection of Pioneer Parkway and uh, Willow Creek. And the other one was the recommendation you had. We ta you, we talk, uh, you mentioned roundabout, um, but why is that not considered appropriate? Uh, could you explain that to the public? Yeah, the, I, just, I just brought up that section on um, the five options. This is the summary from the TIA. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the obviously the spacing of the signalization is going to be problematic in the queuing right. of the intersection. Um, but the roundabout also provides, it, it can provide some of that as well, it, problematic, in that as traffic gets heavier and heavier on the on Pioneer Parkway and Willow Creek Road, the, the queuing that will have northbound, for instance, can get to the point where it can actually back up into the roundabout. Once you back up traffic into a roundabout, for instance, then it, it, obviously you have to be circulating for it to function. And so then that just becomes a, a, a greater problem. Um, I know that, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of work at the city level to try to improve the coordination of all our signals. On Willow Creek specifically, we've been doing that. And so um, we really see this, this corridor as having um, coordinated signals that try to platoon traffic and move it through. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but that's the primary reason why the roundabout, we wouldn't want to do that in that location. Um, we know that future development of the, the, the east side will occur, I, I believe. I mean, it, it, was, it was coming around in 2008 and 9 and market things happened and it, and it came apart, you know, but that's going to develop a lot of traffic. I'm trying to, we also don't want to, I would like to avoid Pinion Oaks becoming that primary intersection for development access. I really think that should occur south at some other location. And whether or not that U-turn location, um, I, I feel like that spacing is good. It would just operationally work very well for the, for the whole corridor. The five options were signalization, roundabout, southbound to northbound U-turn concept, kind of what we were talking about, mm -hmm. a left turn holding bay or acceleration lane, and there was various concepts regarding that. That's that one. And then um, one of them was to try to mitigate some of the need to have that left through the right out only driveway on Pioneer Parkway, which we know cannot occur. And so of the options that we've kind of looked at, that southbound to northbound U-turn concept, and then I've just taken it to the next level to try to make it so that we don't, I, you know, I understand if you lose that left, that's an inconvenience for Pinion Oaks. And saying just go south and go down to Haas, for instance, that's not a very, that's not a very good option as well. Or how about we just let you flip U-turns at the most, the closest southbound uncontrolled intersection. At those speeds, that doesn't seem like a very good option. So 
just trying to come up with a solution that would work interimly and in the long term for the city overall with planning of intersection spacing and development and, and work for the Pinion Oaks residents and everybody else. So that's really how this whole process came about and how we got here. Now, in that 157-page report, there was a traffic accident analysis. Uh, and my question would, to you would be, if we never had a Dunkin' Donuts proposal at all and you made the modifications that you're suggesting here, widening Pinion Oak Drives and putting a U-turn in, uh, would that be better for the residents of Pinion Oaks? Yes, I mean, the things that are going to, all these, all these improvements are going to directly benefit Pinion Oaks. That they're, They have a challenge today. There's a, a lot of traffic on Willow Creek. Dunkin' Donuts is going to participate and add a small amount. But then again, uh, you know, a development like that uses a lot of pass-by traffic capture. So, yes, the, the improvements are going to directly benefit Pinion Oaks. The, you know, the speed humps, those are things that likely people who live there would have liked to have anyways. Improved access out would have been something they would have wanted to have. The widening and the separate turn pockets, all these things are benefits to, to them. Thank you very much. Yeah. Other questions of you? Tom? Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have fun here. <laughs> um, Ian, thanks for uh, showing up and taking us through this. A uh, couple of general questions first. Um, does this, do, those, do, they, do these TIAs satisfy your acceptance criteria? Were they compre too comprehensive, not comprehensive enough? No, they they certainly, you know, we met up front with uh, CivTech and talked about the scope, and so we always modify that specific to the development. But this one had specific requirements that we were looking for, and they met those goals. Now, obviously, I've added in some additional comments and things that I would like to see, but they just supplement what was already seen that, that came out of the study. So, yes, it will be accepted with our notes, and it, it, it does meet all the requirements that we would have for it. And yes. Do you believe that the TIA shows that the alleged too much traffic, too fast traffic is, is real? Yes, but we, we knew that. We knew that Willow Creek, sorry, we knew that Willow Creek has you know, high levels of traffic, and we knew that Pinion Oaks already had challenges. Okay, good. I mean, we knew at a staff level. That's why we asked for all these things to be answered. Good, good. Yeah. Okay, so um, when you showed that, um, that intersection, the picture yes, of that uh -huh. intersection, mm -hmm. um, what I'm interested in is how much time, how much distance and time do you have to merge all the way left if, in fact, you're turning right out of Pinion Oaks Drive trying to make a northbound? Sure. How so... We don't have the exact location. I kind of, uh, in this sentence here, I kind of said that, hey, we would like to see it at 1320 to 1500. You know, we're just, this is, we're talking about, we're at the planning level. We don't know what this is going to look like, but we also have to look at like site conditions if it goes a little more south. But at a minimum, they would have at least 700 feet. I mean, that's the distance between them currently now turning and making the movement, any movement they might want to do before they get to Pioneer. So we're looking at a minimum of that, but likely more, probably 900 feet. So they'll have sufficient distance to turn in the right lane, look for a gap, move to the left, and then get into the turn pocket. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm confident in that, those distances. Yes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Before we continue, would you please check your phones, make sure they're off? Thank you. Tom, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Um, it sounds like the U-turn option sounds like pretty plausible, and obviously you've given us quite a bit of thought. The question that I have, though, is on Pinion Oak Drive. Um, coming out of either the business, uh, the, the mini storage, or the Dunkin' Donuts, or, or whatever else is going to go in there, uh, can, is there a possibility of having a turn in such a way that you can, when you're leaving Dunkin' Donuts, you can only make a left-hand turn? Is there any, so this word, basically, you can't go back into the, into the subdivision. I mean, you know, you could, you could do signing or something like that. I mean, it, the, the, the problem with that is you, obviously, I would think that at some point, the people in the neighborhood would also want to use some of these services. And so 
the, the amount of traffic that would really go through there if you provide these other options, it's going to be less convenient for them to move back and travel across all the way back around to Pioneer and come back. That's much greater distance to go there. So you could sign it. You're not going to real, really be able to fork chop it or any other way to physically control that on a road that small, especially since we can't do anything on um, out in the roadway. So you could sign it, but lo the likelihood of that being adhered to is likely pretty low. I mean, I could just tell you it's pretty low. So I don't think you're going to somehow prohibit people from there only turning left out. Although, I mean, the site can be developed that way with a, some kind of exit that basically tries to direct you that way. I would not advise that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. But And the reason for not recommending it is because people who are living in Pinion Oaks won't be able to utilize the Dunkin' yeah, Donuts. I, I think I think businesses should be open to all the people in the community who want to use them. And I think people, I mean, certainly there's a lot of people here, but I don't think everybody from Pinion Oaks is here. And some of the people might want to use these services. I mean, that's just my opinion. George? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, I'm George Worley. I'm the planning manager for the city. Uh, keep in mind that the Dunkin' Donuts is not the only commercial use on that property. There's an additional Others. section that may have other uses that may actually be more useful to the folks who live in Pinion Oaks. Okay, uh, that's it. Could be service uses. It um, could be office uses. It could be other things. So. Okay, well, since we're still here on traffic, I'll, I do have other questions about the uses. But if, should I ask them now? Or Can wait? I make one more comment before we go any further? We're acronym unfriendly here. TIA. <laughs> uh, a, a TIA is a traffic impact analysis. It's an analysis by a traffic engineer to find out what the impacts are of particular uses or changes in, in road geometry. Uh, we also mentioned SIMPO earlier. SIMPO is the Central Yavapai Metropolitan Planning Organization. They're a roadway planning organization that looks at all of, of the center part of Yavapai County and includes Prescott. So the numbers we were showing earlier are from Central Yavapai Metropolitan Planning Organization, and a TIA is a traffic impact analysis, and we'll try to explain those as we go. Okay. Tom, we'll give the applicant a chance to come up to make a presentation. That might be a time to ask about future uses of it at that time. Certainly, I'll defer. Okay. Any other questions? No. Any other questions for Ian? I do have one. Mm -hmm. Do you think the TIA, Traffic Impact Analysis, reflects the potential growth of homes to the north, like with the Deepwell Ranch area, or to the west on Pioneer Park here. There's a new development going in out there. Mm -hmm. So CYMPO, Central Yopi Metropolitan Planning Organization, they <laughs> um, do a regional transportation plan every five years. It's mandated to update that um, by the federal government. So I am uh, the technical advisory committee member on TAC. I represent Prescott on the technical side. So we are required to do this regional traffic study. That's where um, the future traffic volumes in this TIA came from. And so that basically looks at the entire city, its planning and its traffic analysis zones, TAZs. And so it, it places anything that's zoned like Deepwell, Granite Dells Estates, the all the areas around the airport, all those have projected development within them that goes into a transportation model that is then sent out onto the network of streets. So the numbers and the, the figures that you're seeing for the future traffic impacts represent all those things. So when Deepwell brings in another Saddlewood or a Westwood, those things are in that 2040, those future volumes. Now, it's not, it's not exactly perfect, but they use the conservative measures and go, what is the maximum density they could put? And what does that generate? And where does that traffic go? So yes, it represents the worst case kind of like what traffic will look like. And so that's why I'm confident when I see these and I say, hey, what, you know, we're going to have level of service F at this intersection. What does it look like that we've thought of those things? Okay. That's you. what they do. Is there any projected time frame for the U-turn further south? Well, I would certainly think that we would time that to, to basically, you know, you go through this process, you go here. If it gets approved, you go to council, then they got to start construction. Why take away the access to Pinion Oaks? until such point as you actually have that development 
Um, so I would, I would think that that would occur kind of around the time of the finish of construction. Just, or, I mean, we could move it faster, but I, I kind of see it as a city improvement using a contribution from the developer because it's a larger issue than just them. It solves some other things for Pinion Oaks and them. So I would think that we would time it with the construction of um, either the mini storage or the Duncan. Okay, thank ideally. You. Any other questions? Uh, Tom. Mr. Chairman, uh, Tom Riley. It's Kaylee, so uh, this way you got it straight. <laughs> Tom R. On the site plan that was submitted to us in the agenda packet that was provided by the applicant, I believe, it shows a exit out onto Willow Creek Road. That's the one that you're talking about being a right in, right out only? Yeah, The yes. The access, and I think, I don't recall if even the new site plan i think it's still shown a little high it might need to slide down but yes the access on willow creek road will be right in right out only so and it will have a deceleration lane to take the through movement from the slow lane into like a taper so it can slow out of traffic does that make sense yes it does yes. the question that i have is that if you have that right in right out only mm -hmm. and you have the u-turn possibility why do you need to come out on pinion oaks drive well, yeah, well, access to the neighborhood would be first off, but also if you're northbound, how do you get into the site? So I'm coming from Prescott and I want to go to the site. You can't turn into the Willow Creek Road entry. You know what I'm saying? I have to turn left into Pinion Oaks to turn right into the site. That's my only access from the south of the site. All right, thank you. Yeah. And that would be for both businesses, would it? Yes. So if you come okay. from if you come from Prescott, you have to be able to turn left into Pinion Oaks and then go into either of those side driveways. All right. Other questions for Ian? Thank you for taking time to come over uh -huh. and answer it. Yep. Appreciate that. I, I have one more question. Oh, that guy. Ian. Yeah. Um, the proposed U-turn um, holding lane that you're yes. advocating. Um, do you believe that that would satisfy the existing problem in Pinion Oaks right now in peak traffic left turn out short of somehow creating you know a protected left turn at Pinion Oaks I think that's the best solution for them it's still it just slightly offsets their movement and it provides them a signal you know a signal controlled movement so yes so that that's, that's our way of solving it for their access as well it's just the only one that i can see that really works to balance our arterial needs and their access i don't want to just take it away and make them go right and make them drive through the neighborhood and come out on pioneer which they can do mm -hmm. if you you know right now you don't have to use that left you can go through the neighborhood mm -hmm. but for people who live on the east end that's not that convenient so you know that yeah it does solve that issue this improves their their access I'm trying to solve a larger issue here not just something for duncan i'm trying to solve what do you do with pinion oaks as we continue to grow that intersection is going to get worse and worse and worse until the point where they'll have they'll be sitting there so long they'll make poor decisions and there'll be crashes or they'll just have to turn right they'll be forced to turn right or go somewhere else so it has to be solved regardless mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I can't sig we, I just, I will not recommend signalizing it at Pinion Oaks. It just so doesn't work. That, that sounds like it's something the city should do anyway. That's why we're saying the developer is not fully, res I mean, in my opinion, the developer is not fully responsible because it's solving issues that are bigger than him. He would just, they would need to contribute some kind of monetary contribution. It would be used for us to solve that. Thank you. Yep. In a much overused phrase, that might be close to a win-win. Uh, sir, uh, right now, this is the time the commission members will be asking questions. We will open it up for the public, and you can ask questions at that time of the, you know, presenters, okay? Thank you. Tammy, do we have uh, the applicants here? They were going to be here. So we'll start with the... Uh <coughs> We'll start with the REZ 2107 to the north. Um, is the applicant here? Traffic engineers here. Okay. Um, oh, no, they didn't. All right, so when Betty <laughs> talked more about traffic, we were talking about I'll let you answer all the traffic okay. questions. 
Hello, Jason. Jason Ricky Barnapkin Productions, um, 2828 North Central, Phoenix. Is that good enough? Yes, that's good. Thank you. Um, so nothing's really changed here. The site plan is to develop a Dunkin' drive through restaurant. Um, the rest of the commercial site, as was mentioned by Tammy, uh, is a future development. Right now they have no interested parties because they can't get it rezoned. Once the Dunkin' is um, permitted to be constructed and open and operational and they can see some benefit to developing that the remainder of the site then as tammy mentioned uh the developer or whoever the future users would be would have to come through this whole process again to get you to approve whatever use would then go into that commercial portion of the property um as was also mentioned the access off of pioneer will be removed um, so that there will be just the access on pioneer and off of pinion oaks um, open to questions. I mean, nothing's really changed here since the last pre presentation a few months ago. So, Commission members, Tom, I have a question. Looking at this site plan, and the Pioneer. Well, this is the this is a different one. Okay, the original one. This is the new one. All right, never mind. I do have a question though about the uses that are on that that could be used on the rest of the property, and. Uh, there are some concerns about it, if and if I remember, and Tammy, this may be directed towards you um, as a staff member. With the uses that are allowed in there, if this gets zoned to the business zoning that they're asking for, it can also have all the other zonings that are lower zonings beneath it. Yeah. So whatever they do here, they could do anything from single family homes, multifamily, all those different things could be located on this site. Is that correct? Correct, um, but we are going to recommend a stipulation that any future development of that southern portion, that it comes through a formal site plan review to come through the public hearing process so the neighbors can comment on it and we can evaluate it to make sure it's appropriate uses for that property. Well, I guess the question comes in then, if it's already zoned that way and if the commission and the city, well, the commission recommends the city council decides whether or not that use is appropriate or not, can they restrict uses that are allowed by law? <laughs> Short answer is yes. The longer answer is yes with certain conditions. The site plan approval process is more of looking at how the development is designed, but planning staff as well as this commission as well as the city council can say it's appropriate or not appropriate based on impacts to the neighborhood or impacts to traffic. One of the things that we as planning staff would have a major concern about is any residential use of that property. 27,000 cars a day go past it. It is not a residential property and should not be developed even with multifamily residential. So any kind of commercial development in there would be looked at based on the type of development that's proposed through that site plan approval process. And that process is very similar to what you're going through today. We notify the public, we hold a hearing with you, it goes to the city council and they have to approve it. And depending on the types of uses, it may require a water allocation by council as well. So there are multiple steps to assure that what ultimately gets approved for the remainder of that site is something that is compatible with the neighborhood and also doesn't break all of the things that Ian's been talking about as far as geometry of the intersection or changes to access uh, on Willow Creek Road. So it would give you, if you follow the recommendation from staff, it would give you an additional look. It will give these folks an additional look at any future development on that re remainder of the property. But the city council does have the ability to restrict uses that are allowed outright. If the approval of the rezoning says it is subject to the condition of a site plan approval, they have to go through the site plan approval. We can deny the site plan and therefore the development can't happen. So if the site plan meets all the, all the requirements technically, okay, and we don't like the use that's there, the city council still has the opportunity to reject it because of the use. It would have to be based on the site plan and the site design and the impacts on the adjacent properties. So you can't condition zoning uses in Arizona. That's it's my point. illegal to do. You can limit them by site plan design and address the impacts on adjacent properties. And that's so, how we've done it in the past. So again, if the site plan meets all the technical requirements, 
and you can't reject it for that, but you don't like the use, you're stuck. You're stuck. You can't reject it based on the use that's proposed. Okay, that's my point. Uh, is there a possibility of entering into a development agreement that would restrict the uses of that particular, the remainder of that parcel in such a way that it would be compatible with what it is that staff is recommending and probably this commission would recommend as well? We do development agreements frequently for properties for development. It's a voluntary um, act by the mm -hmm. developer and the city. If uh, they choose to ask us and we choose to say yes to a development agreement, certainly at that point, they're restricting the uses. We're not violating state law by restricting zoning uses illegally. They're doing it voluntarily, and that's a different, different situation. And we've done that with a number of uh, commercial and residential developments around town. Thank you. Would the developer be interested in doing such a thing? I don't see why not. I'm not the developer. I'm just the architect. But, I mean, obviously they want to put something in that everybody wants to go to. If you put something in nobody likes, it's going to fail. They're not going to make money. No, not necessarily. But uh, the okay. next question is, can we, as a commission, condition approval or if we were to do that, can we condition approval based on a development agreement being struck between the developer and the city prior to council? Or could we defer this until agreement is yeah. discussed? That's the, the, the point I'm making is if we say go ahead and do a development agreement, then this thing can continue to move forward if that were, if that were the case. If not, then it stops here and it goes back to the, uh, the owners of the property to come up with a development agreement and then come back to us again and then go to city council. I'm just trying to expedite the process. I, I don't believe you can condition your action on a voluntary arrangement. Development agreements are voluntary contractual arrangement between the city and the developer. Okay. Both sides have to volunteer or it's not legal. So in that particular case, you, you may find yourself either imposing the condition of, of site plan approval to accommodate or consider whatever the remainder of the property is. You could send the developer away and say, come back with a proposal to rezone only the piece with the Dunkin' Donuts, and that was something we discussed before. Or you can accept that at some point in the future, you and the neighborhood and the city council will have an additional look at anything that develops on the remainder of the property. Well, I guess the, the, the issue for me is having a look at it and having the ability to be able to control it. And I think that having a look at it is wonderful, but that may not be the be all and the end all. So that's, that's where my concern lies. Very good. Great. Tom, did you have a question? Yeah, I do. Uh, it's probably for George. <laughs> If I recall right, <coughs> the applicant um, told us in the October 28th meeting that they would be satisfied with just a Dunkin' Donuts on that property. Is that correct? Correct, and that's what, that's what this is right here. So, so on that property, a Dunkin' Donuts, standalone, <coughs> nothing else. Yes, for the rezoning purposes, yes, they would be happy with just a Duncan on there. Into perpetuity, forever. Oh, no, I mean, nobody can <laughs> say that. I mean, you're talking about what ifs again, and that's so, well, not no, so, so my question to George, can, in fact, we recommend uh, that um, any action we take is based on just a Duncan Donuts being considered because this application is, in my mind, uh, incomplete. So basically, you get a Dunkin' Donuts, that's it, or come back to us and tell us exactly what you really want to put in there so we can do this right. The developer doesn't know what they can put in there yet. Nobody has expressed interest. Once it gets rezoned, then there will be interest. The development agreement is something I'm sure the developer would be happy to work over with the city. Let, let me remind you that I voted against this last time because this application was incomplete. Because you didn't tell us, and in your, your narrative, you tell us that you have an idea what's going to go in there. But you don't want to reveal that. Our idea is it's going so, to be a so, commercial So I voted against this, and I'm inclined to do that again, unless, unless you can clarify what else is going in there. 
commercial uses, either business, retail, just like on the South property, they have a retail office building. There's so how does that fit into making us all happy? You, you want to make the residents... What uh, do they want in there? But you won't tell us what's going to go in there. So they don't want anything. So it, at some point, how do we make the neighbors happy if they don't want any development? Go away. In, in specific to your Why, to your question, in specific to your question, you you can't condition the zoning. You can condition reviews later, the site plan approval process that we've recommended. The city and the developer can jointly, voluntarily on both parts, enter into a development agreement that limits uses. That has not been done. And that, that could be something that is a, a recommendation from this body that before council approves the zoning that a development agreement be entered into to limit the uses. I, again, recall you're making a recommendation to the city council who will take action on the zoning. So, so, so we, we couldn't recommend that that So occur. we couldn't recommend Dunkin' Donuts and the site plan is frozen. You, you could recommend that, yes. Um, whether that would stop a developer from coming back later with additional uses on the property, legal under the zoning, commercial zoning of some kind, um, I doubt. I think they could bring back a commercial use that without a condition of site plan would not come back before you and be legal. Again, you can't condition the use of the property Understand. In Arizona, it's illegal. So the city can't say you get a Dunkin' Donuts and nothing else if you have additional property that could be developed. So recommending a development agreement before council approves the rezoning, absolutely within your purview. You could do that. Saying you don't get anything else on your property except the Dunkin' Donuts, I don't think that would hold up even if council said it in the rezoning. You can't condition zoning. George, could we rezone only a section of that land. Like yes, and that was Duncan one of the Dome options sits. that was discussed early in the process of only rezoning the northern piece of the property. And then the developer would have to come back again to, to say, this is remaining. what I have, what I, what I have on here. Yeah. That, that was something that we talked about in October, okay. even. Um, again, that, that's a, an option, but it may, not be, it may not be something that the proposed developer wants to do and if that's the case, they can press you for a recommendation. And again, your recommendation can be no. It still goes to the city council for action later. Okay. You would have to create a separate parcel. Tom Riley. You would. They would have to create a separate parcel to rezone that. You not can't rezone. Re not to rezone it. You can rezone a portion of an existing parcel without splitting it. So we allow for multiple zonings on parcels under our code. It, it would make sense to split it and rezone only one. But there has to be a specific that. dimensional... Yeah, you representation would have, of you what, would have a legal is, what it is we're doing. You would have and a that's legal not given on any of this yet? No. Okay. No, the, the concept that's been proposed um, si since the first application was to rezone the entire parcel. Other questions? That's it, thank you. Other thank you, questions, the applicant? I have a couple. I would imagine the applicant has uh, researched how times of day would affect business and so forth. And donuts probably be more toward the morning than the afternoon on that aspect. That's correct. Their peak hours are up until 10 a.m. Okay. Has there been any uh, planning for how many would be there during different times of the day? Because I believe the applicant owns other Dunkin' Donuts or other facilities like this. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe the breakdown is 80% are visiting there before 11 o'clock. Before 11 o'clock. What about at 7 o'clock or 7 to 8, 8 to 9? Has no. that been broken down any? Um, yes, I, I, I would have to check back on that. I believe it's uh, more heavily you know, visited, obviously, first thing in the morning. People are on the way to work, so they're going to stop there between 6 to 8. But okay. again, the 80% of their business is done before 11. All right. Any numbers uh, between the seven to eight time thing, time frame? I don't have that in front of me. I'm not, like I said, I'm not the Duncan operator. Okay. I believe one of them is on the Zoom. They may be able to answer that, but. Do we have someone on Zoom? Dave Pinella. Um, 
but to go back just while she's looking for that again we would still have to come to you guys for this south portion to get approval as they mentioned i mean we can't just unilaterally do whatever we want here we can do the duncan that has that we're proposing but the rest of this site i can't just do anything i mean we have to come back through you guys we have to get approval from them the development agreement is something i'm I have no doubts that the developer would be happy to, to discuss and to agree with the city. Again, they can't develop this without the city's you know, buy-in as well. They have, everybody has to be happy. Mm -hmm. Again, it was mentioned about the win-win for the um, intersection adjust or improvements. Ian has done an amazing job. I mean, that is a great solution to help everybody, not just now, but in the future. And this project will eventually get developed regardless of what you do on this hearing today. When the east of this road gets developed, this property will be developed again at some point and become uh, commercial. Um, our developer would be happy to work with the city, anybody that wants to chime in on what they would like to see here. I mean, it's never going to be just vacant land for the rest of per perpetuity. It will be developed. So we want to work with everybody to make that what people want to see. I mean, again, developer, this is not a destination that somebody's coming from Phoenix to go visit this. It's a local area. This will be local businesses. What is desired to be there can be discussed with the city in this development agreement, and then they build it, and then everybody gets to experience it and, and, and use it. I mean, that's the point of commercial development, plain and simple. Do we have the developer or the owner on the one line? Yes, uh, David Panella, if you unmute yourself, you can, you've been allowed to speak. Good afternoon, Dave Panella with um, the uh, Southpaw uh, ABDD Capital uh, franchisee. Uh, yes, we do own and operate uh, many uh, uh, Dunkin' restaurants in Arizona. Um, and to, Jason is correct, our, our peak times are, are basically through 10 a.m. when we have 80% of our sales um, in, in our Duncan restaurants. And we do have um, some drive-through and timed um, documentation we can provide. I don't have it at my fingertips right here, but it could break it down by, by hour in the morning to see what those volumes are. Um, but again, Jason is correct, 80% uh, of our volumes in that morning time frame before 10 a.m. I personally would like to see that information if possible on that, which means if we do that, we may not be able to take a vote today. May or may not. We have to see if we're going to make a motion or not. Mm -hmm. Understood. The concern uh, yeah, I... and, and again, it, it's we can give you that breakdown. Are you looking for like in in the in the terms of um, how many transactions are are made in those time frames? Um, volume of cars. I guess what is it you're specifically looking for to break mm -hmm. that those day parts down. There'll be two parts to it, because you're going to have some people who are going to come in there, eat, drink the coffee, and leave. You're going to have some people driving through to pick it up to take somewhere else. So, yeah. personally, I'd be interested in both figures, if, if you do have those. Uh, I, I could see if, it, was, if it, it is available broken down that way. Uh, to be honest, the majority of our customers, 90%, are taking it, taking the product to go, whether it's via the drive-through or they're going inside, getting their don their donuts uh, to bring home. Uh, but there's a very low percentage of actually customers that stay in the facility, and I'll call it dine-in. It's mostly all to go. It's like ninety percent. Okay, thank you, sir. It's Jason Ricky again. I don't know if Toby might be able to address the hours because again, this is a drive-through restaurant. There are standards, I believe. For that. Good morning. My name is Toby White. I'm with the firm of SIFTEP, uh, 10605 North Hayden Road in Scottsdale. And we did both of the traffic studies. And <coughs> sorry about that. You, you can bend it up there. You can bend the <laughs> mic around. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, well, this is not specific to Dunkin' Donuts. When we do a traffic study, we're looking at, we have a big book um, on the Institute of Transportation Engineers Trip Generation Manual, and it um, collects data from across the country um, at hundreds or thousands of different uses over a period of time and 
throws it into it, creates an equation out of it, and that's what the industry standard is for us to use unless we have th something specific from an, an applicant or a, a, a developer or a user that is so specific to their store that, um, you know, and maybe Dunkin' Donuts has that. But this way, once it's a drive-through, you're getting it more, you're getting it more generalized. You're not, so that if it ended up being something else, it was a drive-through and a coffee shop, it would, so, so there is, this is not just specific to Dunkin' Donuts. So what we do is we look at the peak hour, the highest hours of the day, one, one hour in the morning and one hour in the afternoon. And ITE does recognize, and, and IT updates their manuals every three or four years. And there was a recent update, the 11th edition that came out last year, and we used that. Um, and each, each, with each edition, there's more data that they pull from and allows you to, some of it looks, allows you to look regionally. Um, but to the extent that we were able to pull um, information for this project, we used um, an, a land use identified as a coffee donut shop with a drive through window. Now there are two, two types of that. There's some with a, win with a window and no indoor seating, and then, there's, then there is one that also has indoor seating. So this one is the one that does have indoor seating, but the primary generator of the traffic is the drive-through. And, so, and it's based on the size of the, um, of the building. Um, that's the, the um, I guess you call it the independent variable, that, or the dependent, yeah, independent variable that you, in the equation. And so for a, a coffee shop of that size with a drive-through, the AM peak hour, average trip generation, is just, it's about 180 trips. So that's, that's in and out. And what IT also tells you is what, how much of that you can expect is drive-by traffic. That's people that zip in and zip out, mostly right in, right out, which is why I anticipate that expect that that's why the developer wants that site right up there pushed up against the corner because that's where the main traffic flow is. So it's very convenient for somebody on the way to work to drive in, um, pick something up and leave, and it's a smooth movement. That's probably the, the primary, uh, especially in the mornings, in the peak hour, where people are going to come from and that's going to be their primary customer base. Um, so that's 180 in the morning. That's in one hour. So maybe that starts at 6.30 in the morning and continues through 10, and the, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. So I think that's what I did my math right. That's about 800 during that four hour time period, four to four and a half hour time period. And um, so I hope that answers your question there. Okay. That helps. I still have an interest in the owner's figures too. Oh, yeah, yeah, I understand. On that part, okay. Any questions? Okay, thank you, mm -hmm. appreciate that. Do we wanna have the applicant for the mini stories come up now and have discussions before we open it up to the public? It'd be up to you if you wanna do it where they all come up at once for both projects or if you wanna keep them separate. Commission members, thoughts? I, <clears throat> I would recommend that we, let's get it all together now so this way public comment can be addressing either yeah. project and then this way we can move it all forward. Don, I've got one question I'd like to ask George or, or uh, Tammy. Be the Dunkin' Donuts? Before we get to this next thing. Okay. Sure. Um, Tammy, do you have any sense, any idea uh, why the, these two pieces of property have remained vacant for almost 20 years? Why hasn't there been any developed earlier? Yeah, I couldn't answer that. I, I, yeah, I mean, well, until, until reason, a proposal right? comes forward, we don't we don't have any sense of what might go in there. But this is the first time something's come forward on these properties. In addition to that, Tammy's right. Often we don't know what's going to come until someone has an interest in doing it. But the volume of traffic increase on the roadway, the proposed developments north of here and east of here, which will use that roadway, and as Ian said, increase the volume of traffic, is probably the impetus for it. Growth is happening up there, residential growth is happening, and this commercial growth is following it. Mm -hmm. 
Is the applicant for, so. Yeah, this is Susan. I have one question either for George or for Ian. Um, who is responsible for the, currently responsible for the maintenance of Pinion Oak Drive? The city. The city. It's a city road. Okay. Okay. Is the applicant for the minute storage here? Sir. Good morning. I'm Justin Scott, 3205 Lakeside Village Lane. Uh, I'm the applicant for the mini storage. I own and operate five mini storages in the city of Prescott limits. And um, I picked the site, uh, one, because it became available for sale. Two, because when I look at rooftops, um, that drives for me the traffic that I would need to fill up a mini storage. So when you look at the master plans of the communities that have been built or going to be built, um, the second issue was Embry-Riddle's growth. Their student count has reached a point that they would be a perfect client for a mini storage as they leave for summer sessions. Uh, third, the hospital that's proposed um, down and across the street, the potential hospital and its zoning. So it really was about the growth in the area that drove, uh, in my mind, the opportunity to put a mini storage at this site. Okay, thank you. Questions for an applicant? Any ideas on what type of tenants you would have in the office building? Um, I'm wide open on the mini or on the office. When we originally put that uh, layout to, to you, um, we thought a office building that would be uh, neighborhood uh, type, maybe financial planners, maybe accounting, um, chiropractic, uh, anything that would fit that parking. Um, what we've come to decide over the last four months is every site that we own is 100% full with a waiting list, as is everyone in the city. Um, today, based on the site, I would probably go to a lesser use, um, scrap the office building, and potentially just extend my mini storage out um, and make it uh, a little bit larger and do away with an office building. But I'm okay with either. Um, the mini storages on, in general, a mini storage site will get approximately 15 to 20 visitors a day in totality. Um, the customer typically checks in and they are a great customer because you never see them again until they move out. Um, not, not that I don't like the customers, but there's a beginning and end and no middle to our relationship. Um, with technology, we don't need to have anyone live on site. We're able to lease the units online. We're able to issue a door code online and we're to the outside and we're able to issue a door code to the individual unit online. Um, the other thing I really liked about this site is to the south, there's a church that sits quite high. There's elevated elevation. So my plan for the mini storage is to the south, it will be at grade level, and to the north, it will be at grade level. So I won't have an elevator inside this building. And people that utilize these climate controlled facilities like having climate control, but they don't like having to get their um, household goods onto an elevator to get to the second story. So technically, my building will look like a walkout basement home, if you will. Uh, there'll be a lower level at grade and there will be an upper level at grade. So while it's two stories at one portion of the building, um, it will look and feel at each end as if it's a single level. Okay. One of the questions I have or concerns I have with an office building, as you know, some type of tenants don't have much traffic. <clears throat> Medical office buildings have traffic on that it does it does not park for medical as i have it laid out so i had to scrap the idea of medical because i just didn't have enough room to meet the medical parking uh necessary i thought about a neighborhood um, restaurant or anything having to do with commercial but the site really didn't um, lay out in favor for that so um, if you so choose to, to limit me to just the mini storage, I would just expand my footprint of the mini storage and scrap the office building, and I would be totally fine with that. Okay. Any other questions? Susan. What is the proposed height of the building? Well, it's a low, it's a, it's a um, low total ceiling height. So I would assume, and I'm only guessing, that it would be less than 30 feet. 
um, in totality. But I, I'm, I'm thinking that my roof heights inside might be 10 feet. So it could be that if we, depending on what the roof is made of, uh, could be, it could be 20 feet. Other questions? Thank you, Mr. Scott. Thank you. The reason I'm checking here is, um, let me ask a question. How many of the public would like to speak? If you could raise your hands. All right. I have seven comment cards. All right. We, we, also, have... we also have hands being raised on Zoom, too. Okay. Eight comment cards. Before we start, then, uh, we want to take a break for a little bit. Yes. And we'll start in about 10 minutes. What I would ask on it is, since we have a fair number of people speaking, that try to limit your comments to three minutes. I'm not going to cut you off, but try to limit there. And if someone has already stated what you would like to state, you may not need to state it again because once we've heard it once, hearing it twice doesn't really affect too much for us, okay? So we'll take a 10-minute break. <laughs>
Mr. Scott, would you mind coming back up a minute, please? You had mentioned that you would be agreeable to have a mini storage only. Would that be something you would be agreeable to have a resubmission of the site plan, which means we wouldn't be voting on it at this time and have it for a mini storage only? I'd be willing to do mini storage only, um, yes. Okay. Um, chair, chairman? Yes. Just as a side note to that, that with the rezoning for this to commercial, that a mini storage does require another process that we'll have to go through. It has to go through a conditional use permit process through the Board of Adjustments, in which at that time is when we really look into the site, the, the height and other impacts to the neighbors and impose conditions that can help mitigate any possible impacts that mini storage would have. And that's where we prove it really site plan specific at that point, a little bit more details. So there is another process this will have to go through for that particular project. Um, no matter what way we go, that correct. process still has to go through. Yes. Which I imagine you're well, As long as they get the commercial zoning, yes. Only if you rezone it, once they get that commercial zoning, then it still has to go through a CUP process through the Board of Adjustments. Okay. Any comments from commission members? Uh, I have a, another question. Okay, Tom. Um, Would you consider a entrance to the storage unit off of Willow Creek? I will consider whatever makes this, these bodies happy from a traffic flow and allows my customers get in and out of the site. So there's nothing magic about the entrance in, of Opinion Oaks? There's nothing magic for me. I just need to have access from the north and the south into that site. Well, north would be a problem. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Ian, did you want to say something? Sure. <laughs> um, so that would not be preferable from a traffic engineering standpoint, um, but you know they can they can make any agreement that they want to. But it does limit the ability for lefts into that site. That would introduce either a left at Pinion Oaks or a left at Pioneer, uh, a, sorry, a U-turn, that would require U-turn movements, which would be uncontrolled. I mean, the one at Pioneer would be, but um, that's mm. not as desirable as the current access. There, I, and forgive me, but I think there's also great issues. Then maybe that, you know, he knows the site better than I do, but I believe because this is a walkout building where it's lower on this left side and higher as you go south or on the right side of this drawing, it might be problematic for him. They would also, we would also require a right turn deceleration lane, similar to Duncan. This is just, those are just my comments. Okay, okay. I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and we do allow that. <laughs> okay, but you would be agreeable to resubmit the site plan to show a mini storage only? Uh, yes, I'll go to um, all mini storage if that would be uh, preferable. Site, the site plan right now has an office building, and we only vote on the site plan in front of us. That is correct. However, if um, Tom Riley, however, if uh, as I understand it, because there's a mini storage in this site plan, there will be another process that is going to be gone through with the Board of Adjustment and that they're going to be able to go through. At that time, there's no reason why they couldn't submit a site plan that showed all mini storage and have that reviewed at that time. So they could, we could approve this now, or not approve, we don't approve, council does that. We recommend, we can make a recommendation that the rezoning go ahead based on the mini store, based on the site plan that was submitted. Board of Adjustment, as I understand it, can review it if the applicant should decide to submit another site plan that shows all mini storage. As long as the uses that were on this site plan are continu continued on that one, that's it, it could be. That's done. the safeguard. It could be done. The, the The recommendation from staff for clarity is for you to approve the rezoning subject to a site plan, and both of your motions, this site and the other, say that the site plan indicating an office causes some complication later if you approve it with the office and then he comes back with a bigger building because now it's not in conformance with the site plan you've approved. The chair's idea of 
bringing back a revised site plan showing only the mini storage is better from a staff perspective. Legally, you could do it either way. The conditional use permit process for the mini storage certainly will look at the mini storage and any impacts on adjacent properties. But our conditional use process under the Land Development Code presumes the use is legal and appropriate for the site. It's only looking at adding additional conditions if they're necessary, like hours of operation or additional screening or the building has to be painted blue, something that could make the compatibility better with adjacent properties. So that conditional use process isn't a control over the use or the site design necessarily. It's an additional look at it. I, I think a revised site plan is the cleanest approach. And for us, the only problem is, not your problem, mine, but it took six months to get back to this point. And so to get on your calendar again, and make a, it would be very simple for us to change that layout, but what's not simple is getting back in front of you. And that actually can be controlled by this body. If you defer to a date certain, we will be back here on that date whether he's ready or not. Mr. Scott? I can, I can be ready um, within a few weeks, so. We Mike. meet again the last Thursday of the month, or would you rather have the second Thursday of next month? No, I'd like to do the last Thursday of this month. Can be done. Now, do we vote on that, or? You, you, would, you would make that as part of your motion. Just be advised that the city's review of the site plan, the staff review that Ian does, that we do, that Public Works Engineering does, takes some time. And while I understand the, the need for speed for the developer's sake, the, the first meeting next month is actually easier for staff to deal with. So we could try a very quick turnaround, but Mr. Scott's going to need to get us a site planned like um, before lunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do May. <laughs> I think our next meeting is May 12th, or not our next meeting, but our next the meeting in May is May 12th. Now, with the potentiality of this being moved to another meeting, do we want members of the public have an opportunity to speak on this part only now, or wait until it comes to that time frame, or leave it up to you? My suggestion is the, the public may have comments that affect right. the revised site plan, and, and they may help with the process. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Thank you. Don, I've got a question for, for, this, for us. How is this different than 007 being a Dunkin' Donuts only? The applicant brought it up. But the applicant has told us that they're happy with just a Dunkin' Donuts. That's not what we're no, saying. That's not what it's saying. We also have the developer on the line um, on Zoom. Um, Neil Borden, if you unmute yourself, you can speak. I just want to give him an opportunity uh, to speak. Okay, this is Neil Borden, uh, 9 Somerset Lane, Edgewater, New Jersey. Um, if, you, if you look at our property in Prescott Valley again, and that's the one where we developed a Dunkin' Donuts slash Baskin Robbins and a Mod Pizza. Mod Pizza would be a complimentary use because we don't impact ourselves in terms of parking because of the time frames of the day when people go to Mod Pizza as opposed to going to uh, Dunkin' Donuts. So the type of tenants that we would probably look for, which we can't do now, and there's and 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 we've been dis we've been trying to be totally candid with everyone, is companies like Aspen Dental, a dental you know uh, uh, a dental office, or it may be an urgent care. It may be we're not looking to build rowdy bars that are going to be open all through the night, or build a, a a adult bookstore, or have a marijuana dispensary next to Pinion Oaks. That's not what we're about. We're we're developers who are trying to build something that makes economic sense and, and put up our Duncan, which is our, our first 
first priority to have a business, and then we have ancillary businesses. It may be it may be a convenience store, which will benefit the people everywhere around there. It may be a 7-Eleven type store. We're not looking again to do anything that's extraordinary or something unique or something that's going to be an annoying use for the community. Thank you, sir. Do you have any commission members have a question for the applicant? Thank you for the input, sir. You're welcome. Hi, Neil. This is George Worley. I'm the planning manager for Prescott. Uh, the discussion earlier was in relation to whether or not you would be willing to enter a development agreement with the city where you limit the uses through a negotiation with us. Is that a possibility? I don't think it's an issue at all. As long as you tell me what you don't want to see. I can't, I can't tell you what we're going to do because you, you just don't know that. And we haven't really explored it. But because all, like, again, my only priority was to get a Dunkin' Donuts and, and nothing else on this site. If you're telling me or asking me, would I enter into an agreement? Yes, I would. And you just have to tell me the kind of uses that would be disturbing to, to the people of that community or that area of the world. If we're looking for excuses not to give them a rezoning, that's a different world. But if people are cooperating and willing, so are we. And I'm more than happy to do that. Thank you. And you may have an opportunity when we let public input occur to the commission to hear those very limiting factors. So they may tell you what they don't want on that location. I suspect they will. Okay, we're going to open it up to the public. And what we'll do is Kaylee will call the party up. Again, as I mentioned before, if you could keep it to around three minutes on the, or less, that would be beneficial to allow as many people as possible to talk. And if someone has already expressed your thoughts, there is not necessarily a reason to re-express them. I'm not going to stop you, but it would just take up time from somebody else. All right. Everybody have understand the ground rules on that? Any questions on it? Kaylee? Yes. Okay. So I have eight uh, comment cards, those that would like to speak. And I have one that I'm going to read first, okay? Or the applicant. Um, the rezoning of the east entrance of the Pinion Oak development is a very unwise idea for the following reasons. The traffic going in and coming out is difficult at best right now. The traffic on Willow Creek is very heavy, and the speed of drivers is much faster than the post and limit. Pinion Oak Drive is a residential neighborhood, and a business in that area would create noise and light that would be disturbing. Property values would be drastically reduced. If the entrance at Willow Creek were to be closed, the only remaining way in and out would be at Symphony Drive, which is at the upper end of the development, requiring all residents to enter and exit that way. Any emergency situation would make it impossible for everyone to get out safely. Any business that opens at 4.30 a.m. would be a great disturbance to the adjoining residential neighborhood. Many residents walk daily while others ride bicycles and their safety would be at risk with increased traffic. There are no street lights in the neighborhood and none are wanted. Respectfully, David and Rose Gott, 840 Pinion Oak Drive. Okay, first speaker, Robbie Graves. And please be reminded that name and address. Okay. Thank you. Robbie Graves, 845 Panicum Drive. They're in Pinion Oaks. Okay, I'll just make some bullet points if that's okay. Uh, my first one is the signage that they put for this meeting, which I have a picture of on my, on my phone, is really only relating to the storage facility. And now all of a sudden it's, it's brought in for both, both properties. So there could, somebody asked about, you know, made a statement about residents here in Pinion Oaks. You know, you look at this compared to how many live in, in Pinion Oaks, it doesn't really uh, show a good view. 
Uh, but I think if it would have been put on that signage, that it was going to be on both sides, you may have even had, you know, you probably would have even had more people. So that's one that's kind of, a, it was a little bit of a deceiving thing on that sign that they posted. The second one is, uh, on the last meeting I was here, Dunkin' Donuts, the man behind sitting here, he promised he would send a letter out to all Pinion Oaks, south side only, not the north side, but he would send it to all residents. We did not get any letters. So there again, he promised at that meeting he would do it. That's a broken promise already. Um, third bullet is I went to the very first meeting that was at the church with uh, Dunkin' Donuts came in to talk to the residents. They were talking about the Dunkin' Donuts was not only going to be donuts, but it was also going to be ice cream. And that's exactly what it is in, in PV. So now they're talking about traffic between 8 and 10, but they open up at 4.30. If you have an ice cream, you're going to have ice cream people going through all day long, summertime especially, even in the evenings in the summertime, people will be going in for ice cream. So that wasn't even brought up today. Why? Why was the ice cream not brought up? Um, talking about speed bumps. Take a vote right here. How many people want speed bumps in their, you know, entering into their residence? Um, worried about the rezoning. If you rezone for Dunkin' Donuts and then there's those big question marks as to the other three or four businesses that are going to go in there. If they allow a fast food Dunkin' Donuts, who said the In-N-Out Burger doesn't come there? Or Taco Bell, or what, whatever. So now you've got this short front of property on Willow Creek from Pioneer, people putting on their brakes and stuff to, to even to get in, and that, that the yardage or the feet from Willow Creek turning on to Pinion Oaks, so from Pinion Oaks into the driveway that's going to be going into all these businesses, it's not very long. You're going to get, you're going to get cars backed up trying to get into the, into the uh, fast food Dunkin' Donuts place. Uh, let's see, last one is uh, traffic. Oh, in this rezoning, did they even consider all the added traffic that this hospital is going to be bringing? And the hospital is going to be right across the street. I mean, you're going to have ambulances, fire trucks, people visiting. That's it. The, the traffic there on Willow Creek is, is really, really bad right now. Um, and then my only last one, I think, is um, the storage facility. He said that it, it, he's going to be bringing it down to level. It, it wouldn't affect me. My house isn't up against that. But you've got to think of all those people that bought that there that have the Dells view and you put so you start putting something with height on there what is that going to do to their when they bought that home that view was right there so i think that's my i think that's my bullet points thank you ma'am okay thank you okay um i'm gonna do something a little different i'm gonna read the next three speakers so that the um they can get queued up um, if that helps. So Thomas Gatchel, Bob Stockbridge, and Steve Antle. I'm Thomas Gatchel. I live <clears throat> on 965 Pinion Oak between Symphony and Willow Creek. And uh, things were brought up that I had sent a letter to the Planning Commission uh, email after seeing the sign. My big concern was I, I'm not ir unrealistic that there isn't going to be something built on that property. The, the concern was that Pinion Oaks would be Pioneer Parkway 2. And those people out there driving 70 miles an hour, I go out on Pioneer Parkway almost every day. And they go past there at 70 miles an hour, except when the cops are sitting there. But uh, uh, I'm not sure that speed bumps do it. I go over to Amber Riddle every day. They got speed bumps over there, and you see cars jump, almost jump coming off the speed bumps. So 
rather than, when these places all build out and that traffic starts jamming up from all the way up Pioneer, those people are going to say, I can handle three speed bumps rather than sit there and wait my turn at that light. And the traffic is, it, it, he said it was awful already. And the, uh, the other thing is, the, the young lady brought up that there's 180 per hour visits to the Dunkin' Donuts they have right now. So are we going to dump all that traffic down on the Pinion Oaks to get out? That's, that's unrealistic, totally, at, at, a, at that time. And, and if they had the other uh, food-type services, and by the way, the one in, Pin, in Prescott Valley is in an island of, develop, of commercial development. It's not in a housing development. And then the other thing is a correction. There was an attempt to build on the south side of Pinion Oaks years ago, the West Yavapai Guidance Clinic. And that was going to be a rehab center that a great many of us did not care to have there. And at that time, we were told that the airport overlay, which clearly does not exist anymore, would not allow any more drives to be cut in off of Pinion Oaks, any of you that were here then. So these drives that, that you're talking about now, plus up there at uh, Deep Well and down at Banner, clearly states, I mean, that was a federal program, and apparently that airport overlay, if it, somebody has any knowledge of it, has been trashed. It, it does not exist, apparently. But anyway, my biggest concern is about having high-volume business dumping traffic down to Penny Oaks to get back out on Willow Creek, make that entrance bigger, let them people make a U-turn. They don't mind having us making a U-turn to come out of Pinion Oaks. So if they want to go in there and get a donut, let them make a U-turn. Thank you, sir. Bob Stockridge, 5750 Golden Rod Way, Pinion Oaks. Um, I don't understand not having been in your position, I don't understand why um, we're bending over backwards to change the existing, the pre-plan that was made when this kind of zoning exists across the street. Is that not true? Could you restate that question, please? Yeah. We're, we're going through all of this to rezone and give this business this corner when he could have the other corner because the zoning for it already exists. The zoning across the street to the east of this site is business regional, so it's a commercial zoning. I think that was the, the question that's being asked. Thank you. And while Jim's still here, let me ask, what kind of mitigation would you have to have for traffic re reasons, if they were in the area across the street, do I need to address? A, I mean, I there's no proposed development. We would make them do a traffic impact analysis and mitigate that. So I can't say there are already that. three entries <clears throat> pre-made, slow down lanes or whatever the route the the reason is. Um, I don't know, I know that at least one of the, the commission is not real keen on the fact that uh, one of the applicants just can't bring himself to admit that he has a plan for the rest of the, the uh, area that's to be rezoned. Um, I'm a skeptic, I don't trust that. I've seen it change so many times that it it's just beyond me that we would even consider it without having that information. Who on the board would like to have a Dunkin' Donuts in their backyard? Show of hands. <laughs> Sir, that's nothing we can respond on. You know that. The, the other thing is, and I was hoping that the city attorney might be here and answer, do the re can the residents sue the city for the loss of property value? Our, our representative from the city attorney's offices refused to give you legal advice. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Steve Antle, 5871 Honeysuckle Road, right on the corner of Pinion Oaks and Honeysuckle on the south, on the south side, southeast side, I should say. Um, we're looking at the storage unit behind us, uh, depending on the height and what it would be and how it'd be laid out. I know most of them in Phoenix are single level units because uh, I've lived in one and I've used one at one time. So if it's single level, I really don't have a problem. But when you get into a, a situation where it's two story and people are gonna lose their views, uh, they paid in probably in the 90s or whenever it was they bought their lots, they were sold as view lots. Now we wanna just go crush it and say, uh, you're gonna lose 50, 60,000 on your house now because we're gonna put a big two story building there. So, you know, went to a meeting when I first moved here in 13. 2013 and I think it was the city council where they were trying to change the zoning for that and they voted that basically hell would freeze over before they changed the zoning from what it is right now because really the way that's laid out it's a crappy crappy retail zone both sides not so much the south side but certainly the north side and it's dangerous we already know how dangerous it is already it's been stated here by the professionals but, you know, it's coming in and out off of Pinion Oaks into the north side of that thing is just going to grow and grow, and you're not going to know who's going to be in there. And to limit, to change the zoning right now, at the last meeting I was at in October, you stated that basically it had to be filled out as to what was going in there, like the, like the south side. It's not done. They can't get it done without the zoning change. So how do you limit if you give them the zoning change to basically uh, limit what's going in there. I don't know, that's your political problem, not mine or anybody else's, but it's certainly 400 households problem because we <coughs> sit there. I mean, basically those two areas are just beautiful buffer zones for our subdivision, period. I mean, they're just crappy, crappy retail. And you know, what's gonna happen, I don't know, but Certainly, we need to take care of the residents there that paid good money for their houses, for their views, for their situation, wanting to be out in the country and out in the suburbs. And, you know, we love our wildlife that comes around, our javelina, our coyotes. They're all there. And we live there because we do like them. Maybe the city slickers don't, but we do. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Okay, next three, Linda Bray, Tim Welty, and Chuck Taubman. Good morning, my name is Linda Bray. My address is 5987 Symphony Drive in Pinion Oaks. <coughs> um, the city of Prescott voted for a new mayor and for three council members who have advocated slower, smarter growth. Building a Dunkin' Donuts in a residential neighborhood with limited ingress and egress is not smart. Number one elephant in the room is Deepwell Ranch. 300 of those potentially 10,000 homes have been built and traffic has already dramatically affected the intersection of Pioneer and Willow Creek. Deepwell will include two retail areas zoned commercially. That area could potentially house this business in a much better way. The Dunkin' Donuts 7.3 miles away will be open soon. Daylight Donuts is right around the corner from that. And Outlaw Donuts is downtown. I don't think we have a donut deficit in this town. <clears throat> the traffic study is revealing that Willow Creek already exceeds the reasonable cross-section design and alternate roads are being considered. Why add to the existing traffic with unnecessary development? <clears throat> Please live up to slower, smarter growth and resist rezo rezoning in this neighborhood, a quiet neighborhood, a nice, quiet neighborhood. Don't hijack our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Please. Tim Welty, 5801 Honeysuckle Road. That's right in my backyard, our backyard, okay? We bought there in 99, been there 23 years. We bought there because we could look at Granite Dells. Or 75, it was going to be back then. 
a little history there. That was developed by Rocky Mountain, uh, Rocky Mountain Development back in the early, late uh, 1990s, stuff like that. And they really designed all the streets under the county. They were in the county back then. And then it got annexed in, I don't know, 2003, 2004, something like that or what have you. But uh, one time, uh, Rocky Mountain was going to put 25 patio homes in there. They nixed it. And what I heard was because of the traffic. That's what I heard. Anyway, another thing is, too, this is kind of past history. What it should have gone in there is Panic and Drive should have been extended to Willow Creek. If you look at a map, you can go straight over to Willow Creek. But there was a little thing there. One of the superintendents who worked for Rocky Mountain, somehow his compensation, they gave him two acres right there where Zebra Skates is. So that's right there where Pendican would have been extended, would have been perfect, you know. Uh, it's just, it's just all, it will ruin our life. I mean, a two story, 20 foot high, I mean, 20, 25 foot foot back of my house, you know? So what kind of buffer am I going to get, at least, from that developer here? That's pretty much all I got, but it, it's really going, to, uh, uh, really going to affect our lives, our living lives there. What we got left, that we're on 74, five minutes to 12, so. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm Chuck Taubman. I live at 1113 Dandelion Place, and I go in and out of uh, Pinion Oaks all the time. It is getting very dangerous. I tend to like to go down 89 into town because it's a smoother drive, but making that left turn is really getting tough. I, I didn't get the figures on the traffic survey, but when you put it up there, it seemed like there was more traffic on Willow Creek than there was on 89, number-wise. And that's going to get even worse as Deep Well grows. Growth is inevitable, whether we like it or not. And my concern is traffic. When I look at that scheme they have of cars coming in and out, the only, that's going to be fast food heaven. Dunkin' Donuts is going to start, then a Taco Bell or some other restaurant. If you look at Prescott Valley, that's exactly what has occurred. And that corner is extremely dangerous now. It's only going to get worse. Um, for the people that live there, th this doesn't work for us. And I don't want to repeat anything else others have said, but. Thank you, sir. OK, one more. Jerry Verplank. Uh, thank you very much. Jerry Verplank, 5806 Cinnamon Drive in Pinion Oaks. Uh, I'm going to kind of change the narrative just slightly if I can. Um, everybody's talking about development. Everybody's talking about revenue. Um, I'd like to point us out that uh, there's an opportunity, I see it here, for heritage. The, those two parcels of land, that whatever it is, can be turned into a heritage park if the city and the property owner want to invest in the future in the, as well as the history of this community. The owner can deed part or all of the property to the city. The city can invite uh, artists, local artists from Preston <laughs> to come in and create a artistic parkway there that would be a possible win-win situation to give a, take your quote uh, and do that and leave a heritage for this community from now into perpetuity. Go back in time when this um, was the territorial capital in Arizona, and bring it forward. All these new developed uh, homes and stuff, people drive by, what are they going to see? You can put murals, you can put all kinds of things. So just a, th a change of thought. I know there's a lot of money that's been invested already, and I understand that. And uh, economic growth 
drives, you know, development drives economic growth. I understand that too. But there's just a change of, uh, possible change of view. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Kaylee, anybody else? No, Online that's all for in-person comments. So we do have uh, one on Zoom uh, right now. We have William Ray, if you unmute yourself. Hi, <clears throat> my name is William Ray. My address is 56604 O'Clock Lane in Penny Note. And uh, I thank you for uh, calling on me to speak. I just wanted to say that I, I looked through the traffic survey and the key points I took away were that um, the highest traffic potential for a business general use is, um, this is, was stated in the traffic survey, is a mix of fast food and retail. Um, they expected at full um, development, there would be 3,600 trips per day in and out of that um, development. That's 328 cars, uh, trips per hour, entering and exiting this uh, quiet residential neighborhood. Um, I think we already reviewed all this in the presentations earlier, but um, what I wanted to mention was that, as you guys know, uh, Pinion Oak Drive is a residential street that provides direct driveway access to individual homes in Pinion Oaks, and they would be affected by any traffic coming in or out of Pinion Oak Drive uh, of, of Willow Creek, especially if traffic was uh, diverted or uh, people wanted to exit on Symphony. Uh, it looked like they gave uh, five uh, options to mitigate traffic coming in and out of uh, 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 tra traffic trying to reach uh, Symphony Drive in Pioneer. And it looked like four of those five were just not feasible at all, you know, intersections and roundabouts. There was one option, which was a U-turn, a controlled U-turn uh, that the city traffic engineer was uh, promoting. And... I just don't see how um, that's going to prevent traffic going down Penny Oak Drive over to uh, Symphony. Um, even if we get a small percentage of, of that, uh, those 3,600 cars per day, let's say we get 10, 20%, we're still looking at hundreds of cars driving down that residential street. Uh, that's going to affect the people that live there. I also wanted to mention that um, business general is really the uh, zoning that I think this entire neighborhood wants to take off the table. There are other uh, zoning <coughs> classifications that are compatible, more compatible with the neighborhood. There's one called neighborhood oriented business and also residential office. Uh, both of those were uh, compatible with the mini storage, uh, assuming that the height is, is appropriate, but uh, Neighborhood-oriented business and residential office do not allow for fast food restaurants with drive throughs And that's, uh, I think, going to be the biggest impact to the neighborhood. There's no sidewalks on Pinion Oak Drive, uh, no street lightings. We don't, we don't, we don't want lighting. Uh, we don't want commercial traffic for coming in at 4.30 in the morning to whatever hours uh, they, might, they might run to at night. Let's see. Lastly, I just wanted to say that um, uh, the, 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 watching this today, I, I saw that the uh, Phoenix developer who wants to put the uh, Dunkin' Donuts in there said, this will be developed regardless of what you decide, uh, you and the planning commission. So I, I think it's important to, um, to plan for that, to say we're, we're not trying to stop all development, all progress. We want a business, if there is going to be a business there, if we can't do a park, we want a business that is compatible with the neighborhood. Um, we want a, uh, we want neighborhood oriented businesses or residential offices that don't generate the maximum possible traffic for business general, which is fast food and retail. Um, and and one, one more note is I, I just thought that the uh, mini storage developer was was really um, considerate to the neighborhood um, by, by being able to adjust his plan uh, as to, to meet the neighborhood's needs. You know, if uh, there's, there's a few houses that are going to be impacted by his project. And um, if, they can, if they can find some compat compatibility there, that would be great. But the high volume, high visibility business is just not compatible here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can I say something real short? Sure. Thank you. 
Tim Welty, 5801 Honeysuckle Road. Uh, I didn't hear anything today, uh, what I brought up last time, the weather conditions in that report. What effect would they have on this all out there? You get ice, snow? Or... I wasn't here at the last meeting. Okay. Sorry, so I didn't yeah. hear some of But that. I did mention it in the last meeting, so you got that impacting that area too, uh, weather conditions. The stopping distances, the when you realize you got to stop and you put your foot on the brake, there's more feet in there too, but you got to consider the weather conditions. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. One last call. Anyone, if anyone on Zoom wants to speak, please raise your hand. There should be on the bottom, there's a hand that you can raise to let us know you want to talk. Okay, I don't see any other coming up. Good. Okay. We're going to take each one of these separately on that. Uh, the first one on our list here is dealing with the mini storage. We've had discussions about uh, delaying this until the second or to our first meeting in May on that. Is there a motion concerning this? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Ted. I move to postpone approval of REZ 21-007 to the next to our May meeting on the 12th with the condition that uh, we see a site development plan that is only mini storage. Do you want to change that to 008 because 7 is dealing with the Dunkin Donuts? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll change that to 008. And I, and I would welcome any other input because that's we covered so much today that I want to make sure. So let me restate that. Uh, I recommend uh, postponing approval of REZ 21-008 until the 12th of May, uh, subject to the condition we see a site plan which is only mini storage. Does that work? Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it, Tom Hutchison. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on it? Yeah, <clears throat> Tom Riley, uh, I can't support that. I think that uh, the use on 008 is just fine the way it is. I think that there are all kinds of steps that are in place now that these folks will have to go through in order to be able to develop anything out there. And I think that those are designed to be able to understand what the mitigation is going to be from not only mostly a buffering standpoint. So uh, I would rec I, I I would not support this motion. I would support a motion to let 008 go through, but I can't support this. It's just deferring and deferring and deferring, and it's not getting us anywhere. It's not moving anybody forward. Okay. Katie, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Thomas Hutchison? Uh, approve. Tom Riley? No. Susan Graham? Approve. Ted Gamboji? Approved. Don Michaelman? Approve. The motion passes 4-1. Okay. Next one is dealing with the Dunkin' Donuts. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Ted? I move that we postpone REZ 21-007 uh, to the same 12th of May. And considering the conditions that the developer has uh, agreed to this, uh, that w the staff get together with uh, the commissioners and the public to identify those businesses that they don't want on that area. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second to the motion? If there's no second, the motion dies. Is there another motion? Tom? Um, I would recommend that we, well, I, Macy, you know, I could probably add to the other motion. I would recommend that we postpone this until such time that we can get several answers. One of the answers is the businesses, the development agreement being struck between the, um, the developer and the city. And number two, the traffic timing. Uh, the timing of traffic improvements in that area, I think, is critical for us to be able to handle the, what I see is the, the big bugaboo, which is uh, the traffic is the biggest thing that, that's done this. So I would make a motion that we 
delay until such time as a development agreement can be reached and traffic timing can be determined. We have a motion. Is there a second? No second. This motion dies on it. Is there another motion? <laughs> That's two strikes. <laughs> guys are killing me here. All right. Mr. Chairman, just, just to, um, in regard to Mr. Riley's uh, recommendation, if, if the commission were to do something like that and not have a date certain, the conditions could be that the traffic impact analysis and a DA be combined together. Normally that's what's done in a development agreement. So we would have the timing on any offsite improvements, street improvements, along with any restrictions of uses, all in a development agreement. I, I don't know if that helps at this point to know. The other good news is you may continue to make motions as long as you want to. Yes. No. As, as long as you get out, as long as you get we out of here. We don't have lunch, though, just to warn you. Is there a different motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Yes, Tom? Uh, I move that we deny 007. Uh, we recommend to deny the approval of um, parcel 007 based on the rationale that we have an existing safety problem, safety concern. Uh, it, this needs to be corrected. Um, adding four or five businesses is only going to exacerbate that problem. Um, and with that, we add a burden to the residents at Pinion Oaks. So my motion is to deny this uh, development application. We have a motion, please. I requested, you know, is there a second to this motion? All right. I will second the motion. We have a motion and a second on it. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to share. I mentioned to the audience earlier that those TIA reports were 157 pages. And uh, I wanted to thank the city engineer for making it understandable, because it was a real challenge to read through it. Uh, I think we've established, contrary to what Commissioner Hutchinson has suggested, that that the um, traffic mitigation proposal, one of the five options, would make entrance and exit from Pinion Oaks better than it is today. So there are advantages of developing that area on behalf of the Pinion Oaks residents. Thank you. Any other comments? <laughs> Chair usually doesn't make a comment, but it's going to make a comment this time. I have a challenge with a fast food thing at this location. You know, the traffic in there is not good now, and it's not going to get any better. And I'm not sure there's any traffic method of assisting this down the road. You know, the chances of if you have one fast food place in there with an owner that has always ad added on and others maybe down the road, you know, I can't support it either. So would you please call the roll? Thomas Hutchison. Uh, I approve my motion. Okay. Tom Riley. No. Ted Gamboji. No. Susan Graham? Yes. Don Michaelman? Yes. Motion does not pass. Motion does not pass. Well, three. No. Motion three that to two. That means the motion no, didn't it was pass. No, it's three to two. So because of the majority of what's here, it did pass three the, to two. Yeah. Okay. It's not wrong. So, Mr. Chairman, just a reminder for the folks in the audience, this body makes recommendations for city council action. The quickest we can get this to a city council meeting is May 10th. We will try to do that, but I can't guarantee that timing. We will move it as fast as possible. So 
keep an eye out for council agendas. You're welcome to attend the council meetings also. And I would recommend that if you have a strong interest in this, that you attend the council meeting. And thank you for attending. The commission appreciates your input on that. And have a good day. Thank you.